All right, are you ready? It is question and answer time Q&A, where I am going to answer your questions. We've got some wonderful questions for Pastor Dave this morning. Before we go to your questions, I want to remind everyone, if you have a question for Pastor Dave, but you need the answer, you can't really find an answer, you just want to know where I stand on whatever the issue may be, regarding to end time Bible prophecy, regarding scripture, or the rapture of the church, send me a personal message in my inbox right here on my YouTube channel or go to my website, trumpetofgodministries.com and email me your question. Now try not to put it in the comment box of this video or any other video only because, and it's not so much that someone else may have answered your question or we got conflicting answers. It's very difficult for me. I just want to uh, clear this up to sift through all of the comments. It's easier for me and less time consuming if you send me a personal message or an email over at my website, trumpetofgodministries.com. Real quick, I want to make an announcement before I go to your questions. And they are some good questions today. I got an email from a precious brother of mine, Doug, uh, regarding the rapture of the church and uh, some Bible scripture and Matthew 24. And I want, Doug, if you're listening, I am really in prayer and I am in study of the information that you sent me. And I will be doing a video and presenting this coming up. Now, Doug has been on uh, quite a few of my programs and a series I did here on YouTube, The Thief in the Night. Now, you are going to find this groundbreaking and very informative and the truth in the end days. I just want to touch on one thing. Uh, I don't want to give it away. Just stay tuned because this week I will present uh, the information. Um... And this is what uh, I get discouraged to. So many of my brothers and sisters are in the ways of the world and are proclaiming already that the church is still here. The rapture has not taken place yet. We're going to talk about in this series coming up the great tribulation. And the great tribulation does not last seven years. Uh, they are proclaiming Barack H. Obama that they know that he is the biblical Antichrist. Now, Yahweh, our Father in heaven, I believe purposely uh, does not reveal the timing of the rapture of the church to keep Satan, to keep him at bay, to keep him off guard. That's why the Antichrist will not be revealed to the world until the church is removed. That's why I get discouraged when I see brothers and sisters proclaiming someone today. I believe the Antichrist is alive today, but to come out and proclaim that you know this person is the Antichrist goes against all biblical teaching. All right, let's get to your questions. The first one is a, a very, very good question, and it comes from uh, a viewer, Tali uh, Lang, question. Hi there, Pastor Dave. I love hearing your updates and biblical bits of wisdom. Could you help me understand in Matthew 22, 11 through 13, where it speaks about the wedding guest who is at the wedding feast but doesn't have the right clothing? So the Lord orders to tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Who does this pertain to? As I assume it's referring to the marriage supper of the Lamb, question mark. Is this some of us who will make it in uh, the rapture and then be tossed out of the marriage supper of the Lamb? What does this mean? I want to be ready for my Lord, but I am now worried that I will end up like the sad wedding guest, but have been told he represents either fallen angels, that is incorrect, or the Nephilim, and that is incorrect, and we're going to clear this up in a moment. Confused. You need not be confused after, uh, let me explain this to you. 
Uh, Tali Lang goes on to say, can you help me? And I am sure many other pastors. Thank you, dear, dear servant of God. And I hope to see you someday in the sky with Jesus. And I hope to see you there as well. Let's go right to the source. Let's go to Matthew 22. And let's begin right at verse 1. Let me see if I can, uh, this will make sense to each and every one of you. And this is my discernment of uh, this passage. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son. And some think today that do not believe in the pre-tribulation rapture. And, and you read this verse. We need to get deep. We need to come out of the world, get deep into the word. You want to hear from God? You want to have a word from the Lord? Open up the living word, the living, breathing word, the King James Bible. And he will speak to you. Verse 3, and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. All right, now the wedding has take, taken place. Now, and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. We are the servants, the brethren, those covered in the blood, born again, those that have come to salvation, and we are the servants, and we are to go out and spread the gospel of Yeshua, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and to call them to come, to repent, to come to salvation. Let's go to verse 4. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready, come unto the marriage. So again, we go out, the church, this is what we should be doing. This is what I've been preaching on, but no one wants to hear the truth. Rather than being consumed in what's going on, when's the next mega tsunami, uh, giant wave to wipe out the East Coast and the West Coast, and when is uh, the next uh, mega earthquake going to wipe out California, instead of spending your time and energy on that, we need to be preaching to the lost, we need to be inviting them to the wedding supper of the Lamb. But are we out there? Are we being servants? The church is making light of this, and they are running in every direction. Not only the unsaved, the sinners of the word of the world, the church is running and, and running away in all directions. And not all are the bride. So pay very close attention to verse five. But they made light of it. They made fun of it and went their own ways, their ways of the world, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. Let's read on. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. We are going to be, if we are going to pick up our heavy cross and follow Jesus, follow Yeshua, uh, we are going to face persecution. Uh, we are going to face tribulation, not the last three and a half years of the great tribulation, but we are going to be persecuted. We're going to be killed for his namesake, for going out trying to invite, to be service, invite as many as we can to the wedding feast, to the wedding supper that has been prepared. That's what we are called to do. But what are we doing today? But when the king heard thereof, when the king heard that his servants, his kings, his priests, us, the saved, are being treated and mistreated spitefully and, and being slain for going out and inviting those to the wedding feast. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. This is showing what is going to take place with the wrath of God. Then saith he to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which are bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad, both sinners of the world, and good. And the wedding 
wedding was furnished with a guest. And when the king came in to see the guest, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. He was out of place. Everyone else was dressed in fine white linen. But one person was not dressed in this fine white linen. He didn't really belong there. And when the king came in to see the guest, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. He wasn't dressed for this wedding. And he saith unto him, Friend, how comest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. For many are called, but few are chosen. I want you to remember that. Many are called. We're out here calling as many as we can, but few are chosen. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is not uh, speaking of fallen angels, not speaking of um, the offspring of the watchers or the fallen angels, the Nephilim. This is speaking of those that just did not repent, did not come to accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. So I just want to clear that up. And brothers and sisters, we gotta, we are the servants. And the wedding piece is about to take place. Let's spend our time preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right, I hope that answers your question. Let's go to the next question. Oh, these are good today. These are tough but good. <clears throat> Here's a good one from Jamie Joe. And Jamie asked, hello and blessings. My question is this, how do dinosaurs and cavemen and all of that stuff fit in if, and I do believe the word of God, that Adam and Eve were the first created, then where do the cavemen and all things prehistoric fit in? Very good question. And Adam and Eve were the very first. Now, I want you to understand uh, one thing. I did a video not too long ago where they had reconstructed um, the faces, the skulls, of uh, people that lived during the time of Jesus, 2,000 years ago, and going back thousands of years ago with the modern technology that they have today. And they look just like someone we would see today. They didn't have the features of a cave man or a cave dweller. They look like someone that we would see if we went to the Middle East and we visited the Middle East, maybe Jerusalem or Bethlehem. That's how they looked back then, going back thousands of years. Now, as far as dinosaurs, they are mentioned, believe me, in Scripture. And now, again, thanks to modern technology, and uh, we're not going to read this in our history books because they don't want you to know this. Um what we thought at one time were millions and millions of years old we're finding now are only thousands of years old through carbon uh, carbon dating uh, so what uh, the theory of evolution and that's just what it is a theory but the world began with a big bang and we had cavemen and uh, turning then they're walking upright that's a theory that's not a fact. The fact is the living word. And as far as dinosaurs, let me take you to um, the book of Job. For your reference, Job uh, chapter 40, verse 15 through 24. Behold now behemoth, which I made with thee. He eateth grass as an ox. L uh, lo now, his strength is in his loins. And his force is in the navel of his belly. He eateth grass, just like an ox or vegetation. His strength is in his loins, and his force is in the navel of his belly. He moveth his tail like a cedar. Can you imagine how big a cedar is? So this beast, bohemoth, tail is like a cedar. The sinews of his stones are wrapped together. His bones are as strong pieces of brass his bones are like bars of iron he is describing right here what we would call a dinosaur he is the chief of the ways of god he that made him can make his sword to approach unto him 
Surely the mountains bring him forth food where all the beasts of the field play. He lieth under the shady trees in the covert of the reed and ferns. The shady trees cover him with their uh, shadow. The willows of the brook come past about him. We're talking about a giant of an animal that eats grass, vegetation, uh, whose tail is like a cedar. I just want to show you, if you need the truth, all you don't have to follow me. Just go to the living word of God. All right, let's go to... Um, <coughs> excuse me. All right, let's go to two questions, I believe. Uh, and I don't have the person's name. My wife's church friends tell her that she shouldn't badmouth Obama, that he is president and should respect him. I think it says somewhere in the Bible to obey the law of the land. What should we do when they bypass some laws that are just not right? Maybe like uh, you have to get a RFID implant or something that goes against your belief. First, let's get it, uh, go to Barack Obama. Uh, we need to pray for Barack Obama that uh, the Holy Spirit would come upon this man. He would see the times that we're in and he would see the error of his ways and come to repentance um, and cry out and we need to pray for him and some of these today are, are really believe he is the Antichrist is not biblical the church is here the Antichrist will not be revealed until we are gone and Satan is waiting in the wings for the rat he can't do anything as long as we're here so instead of calling and bad-mouthing Barack Obama and calling him the Antichrist, let's pray for him that his heart be open to the living God, to Yahweh, that his heart be open to Yahweh. Let he repent of any sins that he may have committed now in the future or in the past and call upon Yeshua to come into his heart. And as far as the government uh, and obeying when Yeshua spoke of this, and we are to uh, follow the law and obey the government, as long as it's not corrupt, as long as it's not a corrupt government that is taking, uh, going, trying to implant you with what possibly may be the mark of the beast, I don't believe that was God's intent that we follow a government that is out uh, biblically to uh, harm the church. I love you all. God bless. Send me some more questions right here on my channel. Send me a personal message or go to trumpetofgodministries.com, my website, and email me your questions, and we will continue tomorrow. Yabu.